Hi, this is Eva for Once Upon a Timeline, and today we're going to talk about how meteor showers are now colored. And in fact, each shower is known to have specific colors. So I heard someone mention just recently that a certain meteor shower was showing a lot of green meteors, and I'm like, what? Now, I have heard in recent months that a specific meteor was seen here or there, and it had a color. And I was already suspicious of that. I don't really remember uh, big meteors or shooting stars being colored. I thought maybe, well, once in a while. But then when I heard that each meteor shower is known for its own colors, I started to get really suspicious. So I looked into it. So here we go. Why do meteors glow in vibrant colors? Well, I've never heard of them glowing in vibrant colors, but here we go. Okay, now there's going to be some variation in what they say is happening. Each location is kind of contradicting itself. I think I call this one kind of the new school thought uh, mixed with the old school thought on this one. If seen out of the corner of your eye, a meteor may appear to give off a flash of white light similar to stars. However, meteors can appear in a variety of colors if viewing conditions are clear or if they are captured in a photograph. So there's, there, the, here they're saying that it looks white because uh, maybe you saw it out of the corner of your eye or it wasn't very clear. But if you take a photo, you'll see the color. So this kind of makes it sound plausible. I personally am only have only ever seen white meteors and I have seen um, the meteor showers quite a few times and they were always white. So the excuse here is, well, maybe you just saw it out of the corner of your eye. I'm not buying that, but it does sound plausible. But the color of light that the meteors produce depends on their chemical composition. Different chemicals in the meteors produce different colors. For example, meteors made of calcium will give off purple or violet color, while those made of magnesium will appear to be green or teal. There's kind of a chart thing. There are some additional colors that I've seen. Um, Green ones can be from copper, for instance, I've seen on some of them. What a meteor is made out of is not only factor that determines the color that it appears. The speed at which the meteor enters the Earth's atmosphere can also affect the color. The faster a meteor moves, the more intense the color may appear, according to American Meteorological Society. Among fainter objects, it seems to be reported that slow meteors are red or orange, while fast meteors frequently have a blue color. The Geminid meteor shower, one of the best meteor showers of the year, is a shower known for producing intensely colored meteors. The Geminids peak in December. The most common colors for this specific meteor shower are yellow, orange, and sometimes green. The Perseid meteor shower, another popular meteor shower, occurs every August, is known for producing shooting stars that give off vivid colors. I, I've certainly never heard that it was known for giving off vivid colors, the Perseid meteor shower. I've actually seen this one many times, and no, there were never any vivid colors, even on very clear nights. So no, I'm not buying that. Okay, so here we go. Let's verify this. Um, this was actually the article that had a lot of good info. The Perseid meteor shower has many colors of shooting stars, but apparently I've used up my quota of free viewings. But um, in this one, the Perseids are known for neon green, purple, and pink. That's a little bit variant from what the other article was saying, um, but I think it's a different shower too. So um, neon green, purple, and pink for the Perseids. No, I've, I've never heard that. We're over here. They're saying the Geminids are, um, yellow, orange, and green. So anyway, apparently there's a variation between showers now. All right. Here is a slightly different version where they're saying, um, each Perseid particle zips 37 miles per second, creating a quick, quick, white hot streak of superheated air. Now this is like my old timeline where they're just saying it's white. The nuggets and grape nut cereal are a close match to the estimated size, color, texture of typical meteor shower particles. Okay, so they're just uh, grape nuts colored. This particular bits were shed long ago by Comet Swift Tuttle. This is another bit of an ME for me. For me, it was Comet Tuttle Swift, not Swift Tuttle. Um, this makes it look like Swift is an adjective in front of Tuttle. It was Tuttle Swift for me. Anyway, this timeline, I've checked it, and it is, in fact, Swift Tuttle. Anyway, so here they're saying it gives off white streaks. 
they're not these people are not with the program here on the uh, new colors apparently great show predicted for Perseid media shower August 12th 13th which is just past all right so here's another one now this one kind of flips on on the ear because one of them said they look white but if you really get a good look at them they're colored another one said they're white now this one kind of says the reverse vivid colors are more often reported by fireball observers because the brightness is great enough to fall well within the range of human color vision these must be treated with some caution however because of the well-known effects associated with the persistence of vision so i guess they're saying that it might be after images is why we see colors well i've never seen colors and i do see a lot of after images but i do not because the streaks are so fast uh, that it does not seem nearly long enough to cause um, the the way after images are caused is that you're they say that the eyes become fatigued after seeing the same color for a while and so then when when that color passes you the after image is a sign of the eye fatigue well fireballs are so quick I don't see how you would get eye fatigue for that color so it doesn't really make sense to me here about the persistence of vision assuming that's what they mean I don't know what else they would be meaning okay but basically they're saying here that because of after images or persistence of vision uh, observers are more likely to see colors uh, which is kind of the reverse of what the other two were saying reported colors range across the spectrum from red to bright blue and rarely violet the dominant composition of a meteoroid can play an Im important part in the observed colors of a fireball so they're saying meteoroids are just uh, what's out there and then if they burn up in the atmosphere they become meteors and if they land they're meteorites so that's what that meteoroid I haven't heard that term in a long time to be honest with certain elements displaying signature colors when vaporized for example sodium produces a bright yellow color nickel shows as green magnesium as blue white the velocity of the meteor also plays an important role I think there was one other for this one now this is also interesting because this is also an ME for me are meteorites glowing hot when they reach the ground now for a really long time I was always reading and told and I've seen it many times that um, it was a common myth that meteorites were hot when they landed and in fact they were quite cold like ice cold and I always had a little bit of trouble wrapping my mind around that but they would say that if they just landed they would be ice cold so there's been a bit of a sw switch on this one the excuse for it is similar but probably not well in my old timeline it was no not ever the ablation process which occurs over the majority of the meteorites path is very efficient heat removal method and was effectively copied for use during early manned space flights during the, in the final free fall portion of their flight meteorites undergo very little frictional heating and probably reach the ground only slightly above ambient temperature I find that hard to believe it seems like friction was always the big deal for reentry and overheating for the obvious reason however exact data on meteorite impact temperatures is rather scarce and prone to hearsay they therefore we are only able to give you an educated guess based upon our current knowledge of these events okay I was always taught that they're cold 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 um, and the story was that and it never really made a lot of sense but that the um, they would come in so fast that the, the outer area would just get burnt off so quickly that it, the heat was not able to travel to the inside of the of the stone and the inside of the stone was very cold from being out in space and so you would just it wouldn't uh, have time to heat up the whole inner of the stone and the part that did get hot would just burn off and so that was their story of why they were really supposed to be like ice so apparently now they're saying they're really supposed to be ambient temperatures slightly above ambient temperatures so here they're saying it's just a tad warm but it's not it's not cold cold but this story is completely different now it was always cold cold for me so I looked into it again um, again more of the same story this entry through the atmosphere causes the outside of the meteorite to become heated 
Exactly, it becomes heated, chain shape, and often leave behind a burnt fusion crust. So it leaves behind a burnt fusion crust and it was heated. However, when a meteorite finally lands on the ground, it is not glowing red hot. This is because of the ablation process which occurs on entry. The hot outside layer dissipates as the meteorite has been traveling so fast, only the outside has become heated. Also, the meteorite has been in space for billions of years and its core, core is cold. As the meteorite becomes near to the ground, it is often slowed down and cooled enough that when it lands on the ground, it is often just ambient temperature. I don't understand how um, the slowing down cools it. I mean, if stuff is, I guess they're saying it's, I don't know. I just, if it's going so fast, then it should be landing still hot, but they're somehow saying that it slows down and cools. I mean, I don't know. The whole thing is just weird. And the story has changed. So anyway, another ME for me. Um, here's another one that was interesting. I've just been hearing about this Geminids in the last few years. I do not believe that we had Geminids in my original timeline. Uh, they've been around a couple of years. They're so starting to feel familiar now. Um, another thing with, with me was the original Perseids, uh, it was supposed to be rare when we get a good show. When they first came out, they'd say, oh, it's so rare that we get a good show. That's why this year is so unusual that you could really see them. Usually they're so slow, it's not worth looking at. Um, so now what I've noticed is that every year now, pretty much, it's worth looking at. Uh, and they used to say that was very rare. So uh, we get 70 per hour this year, or, or got. Um, and uh, which is was used to be the super rare, very active year. So now it's just normal, I guess. Just seems like every year is a good year now. And then the Geminids. Now this one is interesting because the Geminids are getting 120 meteors per hour. Um, because of their brilliance and rel relatively slow velocity, the Geminids are one of the few meteor showers worth watching, despite their reduced numbers. Uh, 120 meteors per hour was more than the Perseids. Uh, I don't see why the Geminids are called their reduced numbers when they have the most numbers. So that does not make a lot of sense to me. Also, we're getting um, a lot more just different ones, like these Leonids. Now that, I think, have been around for a while. Um, but Orionids, never heard of them. Draconids, never heard of them. South Delta Aquarids, never heard of them. Eta Aquarids, never heard of them. Lyrids, no. Quadranid, quadrantids, no. Uh, I think that what we're going to find is these other ones are going to slowly increase in numbers as well. I think we're going to see a lot more colors. Each meteor shower is going to be known for its own special colors. Um, I think that that's the pattern that we're seeing here very strongly. Okay, so let's look at a few of them. Here's a green one. These have all been somewhat recent ones. There's a really bright green one. There's been a lot of green ones I've been finding lately and hearing about in the news. Uh, those are all new to me. I just don't even remember that many uh, really bright meteors anyways. There's just been so many lately. Used to be super rare. Now this one is said to be red and orange. It looks really orange to me. Another thing they're saying is they're different colors along their entire streak, which is interesting. So I think we're going to see these become almost rainbow. Okay, this one's kind of a blue one. I have not seen a lot, but there are some of these blue ones. This one's violet. So anyway, lots of weird colors. A lot of things going on with the meteors. Uh, the colors, uh, it's following the, the Emmy's following that pattern of adding colors to a lot of things. So keep an eye in the skies. I think we're going to see more and more interesting things coming in the future. This is Eva signing off for Once Upon a Timeline.